I'm lucky that uh, I have a lot of friends with boats. I can I can get on boats, you know, you know, a bunch of times a year. Uh, but I would say, generally speaking, that I'm known as a wade fisherman. Um, a wade fisherman that fits all, fishes a lot. Um, I mean, I try and do at least 125 days a year. But recently, last season, my my season was cut short by it, almost half. Uh, had an ankle problem, a knee problem. Uh, I went under twice, which was scary both times. <laughs> Fortunately, I was with somebody both times, so if I got out of hand, I, I you know, I, I, I would hope I would be saved, uh, unless they didn't like me or something. But, um, but um, those two times going under, they got me thinking that I need to maybe fish from boats a little bit more often. Now, when I do fish from boats, um, I try and bring a a couple different flies that I normally don't bring when I'm weight fishing. And it's more like the style of fly I bring. And um, this is one of those styles. I, I just refer to this as like a boat fly, uh, a disturbance fly. It's almost like a like a stimulator in a way, right? But this one is like in the style of a March Brown. And here's one I pulled out of my box from last year. This is the Green Drake version, right? And I do an ISO as well. So the three big flies I try and do. And you know, it's like an exaggerated March Brown. And the idea is, is that when you're in a boat, sometimes you're just pushing through a pool or maybe even like a, a rougher water, one that you really don't normally see fish rising in because it's just it's just rougher water. So you're going to push through and try and go to a, you know, a nice flat pool. But Hey, I mean, there's no point in just cruising through it and not throwing something. So you want something that's going to float for the entire stretch, and um, you want it to be big and it cause some commotion on the water. So maybe you can draw a fish up. You know, he, the fish is looking up and he sees this big thing coming. He says, "Oh, let me go and just pick this thing up." And it turns out that it's got a hook attached to it. But that's the idea of this of this fly boat fly. Is that you don't have a lot of time. And you're trying to create a disturbance on the water to, to get a fish to, you know, looking for a big meal. So let me show it to you. Usually what I do is, is like the March Brown is like a size 10, right? Well, I tie the boat fly version, for lack of a better term, that's what I call it. I tie it on a size bigger. So for instance, this one happens to be uh, a 10 2X. So I use the 1280, right? So I love these. Uh, I love I love the Daiichi series, the 1180s and the 1280s. Man, I mean, if I have to pick a hook to fish for the rest of my life, I mean, it's going to be these Daiichi drive fly hooks. I mean, they really are awesome. They're they're the weight. I mean, it's just non-existent. They're super fine. It's 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 great, and they're strong. I mean, I I. I thought, you know, the biggest fish going on these things, you know, as far as trout is con con concerned, uh, and never had a problem. Now, um, the thread, Uni, Camel, Ado, you can use Tan, Tan's good as well. Now I tie on the way I always do, which is a little bit back from the eye. And I go, you can go almost halfway, but uh, an important part of this is that I try and keep the wing back pretty far. So where was that one I had? I try and keep the wing back pretty far. So, and that's because I like to end in a dubbing head. Now, Snowshoe Rabbit is the wing. This one is brown, this one's dyed. You can tell it's dyed because when you look at the top of the foot, it's got color on it. Um, but when you get it, usually it's together like this, right? And you got the, you can see the toes in here. Well, what you need to do is, if you want to create a big wing with this, you got to split them. You have to come in here with like a flathead screwdriver, and you put it between the toes like this, and you just wiggle it down until it snaps and separates. And then once once that happens, once you separate all these, you can separate them all. Um, you can see that there's the long stuff is inside that's how you get to the long stuff. If you don't do that, if you don't split them, you'll never get anything that's long enough to tie one of these big flies, without a doubt. So, 
So split them, and, and, and not only that, you're just going to find more hair to use. So we need a good amount. I mean, we don't have to get crazy, but but we need a good amount. It's got to have some, it's got to, it's got to cast a shadow. <laughs> That's what I like to say. It's got to, this thing's got to cast a shadow. When this thing's coming down there, it's got to look like a, a big sailboat, a big marsh brown sailboat. Now, when you cut it off, oh, there's my phone. Um, when you cut it off, you got to make sure that you get to these things and pull all this garbage out of here because it's just going to bulk it up. That's good. Right? Now make sure you got this waxed. I waxed it, but... I'm just going to wax it again. Now, you know, pretty long. Put some good turns in there. Hold those butts and just keep wrapping down. Nice and tight. And if you do that, you're gonna you you compress those those um, that hair so much that it gets incredibly incredibly thin. You'd be surprised at how thin you can get it uh, by doing that. If you can see, and then it just I mean that's really, really you can't do that with deer hair. If you had a big clump of deer hair like this, I mean your body would be freaking a quarter inch big. <laughs> So let's go down to the tail. Tail. Tail I like to use the lighter colored hairs from from a moose hide. So when you get one of these, there's usually black, there's white, and there's like a tan. I think you need this one happens to be closer to ten, I think. More than a hook. It's gotta have some 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 prominence. It's gotta look even. This might be, I got a dog sniffing at the door now. Hear that clip, clip clapping? That's the dogs. Now, I just put them on with some loose turns here because if you if you try and tighten them up, it's just gonna flare. Now, flaring is not that big of a deal, but, you know, I just want it to flare a little bit. I don't want it to flare out like crazy. And let's just cut this off and go back. Just want to make sure that it, it, you cut that tail to match the body as best as you can. And if you tie it in a little bit loose too, it's going to make it easier. The, the tighter you tie this the first time around, the more it's going to flare on you. That's good. Dubbing. I use this on every single March Brown. Doesn't matter if it's a gigantic one like this or a normal one. It's just this tan synthetic. I would just use whatever you want. Um, but yeah, a nice light tan works good. It's going to help you see it as well. Now I try and do a turn underneath, which can make it flare, but that next turn, well the first turn on top, I try and make it a little bit loose and on the tail. Which hopefully keeps it together a little bit if you can see that. Now if you can see the thread, it doesn't matter. What's more concerning is, is that you don't want it to flare. So, at least I don't. Now, this dubbing is freaking it's one of the reasons I like it, but man, getting it to come off is damn near impossible. I mean, this stuff is stuck. Okay, now let's post this. And when, I, when I do this posting, I like to go, you know, into that crevice, obviously, but I also like to run it back and forth the thread. And the reason is, is I'm not trying to create a big slope. Because that slope uh, will just make the thread slip. It could also make the hackle slip, too. Now, 
let's double check this here. And this is this is pretty long. So something good you can do is is that you can bring this up. If it's too long, you can just get in here and and just tear it. Don't cut it. That's better. Now we split it just like we would do like a wood duck wing. Hmm, let me look at this here. Now another good thing about this is if you feel like it's too far back, like I feel like it's just too far back, I'm going to put some turns right in here and then go back in front. Now effectively I've moved it up like three turns. I'm doing three this way. Let me just double check. Then I got the center here. Yeah, one, two, three. One, two, three. And I also lash them too. So I'll go around, and I will lash them a few times, and I'll actually run them up a hair and then back down, almost like I'm posting a you know for a for a um, a parachute. But I do this because it's it's going to help keep them together. This is not like wood duck. And if you look at like like. Because this style is very much like a like a wolf style fly. If you looked at his post, he ran them up too. Hackle. I use two hackles. Now on a March Brown, you're using a grizzly and a brown, correct? Well, in this one, I like to use the grizzly, but I also like to use a Cree. So we got two. We got a Cree and a grizzly. And you can just line up, line up the stems, both of them together. Tie them both on. Make sure this thing is big enough because uh, this part right here. Because if if the back is huge and this is small, when you tie the hackle on the back, it's going to be big, and then when you get to here, it's going to be small. It's going to be all messed up. Now you can tie. I mean, if the, if the hackles are the same length. You can uh, you can tie them together, but um, I mean you could do them together or or separate. I'm gonna do these separate because they're not the same length. Usually it's easier when it's the same length to do that. So now this is the Cree. I'm gonna put a bunch of these in. So this is three. That's four. Right in there. Two. Three, four. This is the one I really want in there. And then I'm just going to run this up basically to the eye, take the hackle pliers off, and leave it. And now this one, I am just going to put in two in the back and two in the front. And I have no idea why I'm using hackle pliers. This thing is so long, it's unnecessary, but. Get it right in there. Yeah, you know what? Maybe I'll throw in one more right in here in the front. Just this is basically the the grizzly is just to just to give it up that white. Because the blacks in the Cree, obviously. Now we got this whole big mess here, right? So what I do is I take the whole thing, lick my fingers and fold it back, everything, the stems, any kind of, you know, um, fibers that are sticking out, like there's one right here, if you can see it, just grab it and fold it back. I go back pretty far. I go back pretty far, and I hold this, hold the thread, 
this shows how long this one was. This thing's still good for a normal size Marge Brown. Now we take this tip over here, break that off. And now I go back to my dubbing, because I, I kind of like to end in dubbing on these 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 big boat flies. I'm not sure why, but I don't know. It just makes it feel like it's a little more hefty. I, I don't know. That looks like I got a tail, a bent tail here. That's good. Okay, so let's get this dubbing up. And make sure you don't trap in anything. Yeah, I, you know, a, a decent size dubbing head is 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 not bad on this. Keeps keeps the wing up too. So there we go. And now I'll just throw on some super glue here. do a whole bunch of turns. And that's it. Let's bring this forward, bring these hackles in. I mean you can see fold that stuff back, it's it it doesn't ruin anything. Now if you had a feather wing that's a different story, but like a like a wing like this, or a or a um, a wood duck wing, it's not gonna screw it up. Just fold them back. It's gonna last a lot longer by folding those back. And that's it. Let me show you the front. And it's important to understand this is not supposed to be like a delicate fly. It's it's it has a job, and the job is, you know, to stimulate the water, to rough it up, to um, you know, to be seen and to float for a very long time. That's the whole idea of it. So this is more of like, I would consider this even like an attractor pattern. That's really what it is. So this is it. March Brown Boat Fly, Disturbance Fly, whatever you want to call it. But it's basically like a stimulator in, in, the, in the style of a March Brown. All right, thanks.